Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Indian Captains. My name is Shweb and uh, today I've got you a very interesting episode. Uh, most of you guys uh, are aware of the pilot exams that happen in India. And uh, across the globe we all have different levels of pilot exams, be it for your PPL, CPL or your, for your APPL. So today um, we've been uh, getting a lot of queries as to how do we need to prepare for our DGCA, which is the Indian Civil Aviation Authority uh, pilot exams um, and how do you how do you uh, approach the subjects what do you need to study uh, any study materials uh, if any to be re uh, referred and uh, what can be expected from the paper so today I'm going to be giving you a little bit about uh, every single topic uh, and every a little just about all the subjects so stay tuned So uh, before we get into the video, I hope you've seen my video where I've told you that the most important procedures involved in getting your commercial pilot license um, would be to also get your medicals and then get something called a computer number. So I'm assuming you have a computer number which is a registration number from DGCA to do your pilot exams. So um, for your CPL exams, we have three papers, uh, the three main papers being air navigation, meteorology and regulation. And then along with that, we have two more papers, which is tech general and tech specific. So whether you would do it in India or abroad, you need to do at least the first three papers that I have mentioned. So let's get into the papers and understand what each subject is all about. So the first paper, air navigation, this is the most toughest paper out of the lot. Why? Because uh, your air navigation consists of various sub subjects which I mean to say is that it's not one subject that you're studying, you're studying various sub subjects included in the air navigation paper. So one of which um, is your general navigation, uh, which is basically you're going to be talking about lats, longs, rum lines, great circles, a little bit about the projection of charts um, and uh, a little bit about distance calculations, your CPPNR, which is a critical point and a point of no return. Uh, those are some of the calculations that you're going to come up uh, in the general navigation. Uh, then um, we have something called as the instrumentation, which is nothing but uh, setting about your instruments, how your instruments function. Um, if in case there is a failure, how, how do you what do you how do you need to detect that uh, failure and how do you need to correct it and take your uh, step of actions. So that's that comes to instrumentation. And instrumentation can consist of both analog instruments as well as the digital or your garment setup or your G1000 setup. So um, a little bit about all of that is discussed in the instrumentation part. The third and the most important part is your radio navigation or radio aids part, which is basically navigation by using radio aids such as a VOR and NED. So these are aids that are going to help you to go from one place to another uh, with the navigation facility and also going to help you to do your approaches. I think you've already heard about your ILS and your um, other VOR approaches, your non-precision approaches to get to a particular airport. So uh, these are uh, the chunk of navigation part and some people forget that these three are the main topics. There are two more topics that come that are also asked. One being from your mass and balance, which is basically calculating the aircraft's takeoff weight, uh, adding in fuel, passengers and cargo. Uh, and then uh, we also have, uh, which is also called payload calculations. That comes from the mass and balance uh, part. And then we have a little bit from the performance part. Uh, with regards to your loading um, and your stabilities. So um, all in all, if you uh, consider uh, the the portion and an application is vast, and we have a collection of theory as well as practical. The most important uh, question that most people ask me is what do I suggest or which, which part of this should be given more preference? Uh, trust me, with my personal experience and with who I, whoever I have known and who have, who have thought, um, uh, the consensus to this is that you can't really leave any part. Why? Because there are times in the exam where there is one part given more weightage and you get more questions out of it. And on another attempt, it's a very different story. Like there are attempts where you have a lot of theory questions and there are attempts where you have a lot of practical or numericals. So you need to be, uh, basically you need to know everything or whatever is in the portions to avoid an untimely uh, result. That's point number one. 
And with air navigation, um, it's, it has 100 questions, MCQs, ABC, three options. You need to choose one option and there's no negative marking and you need to get a 70 to pass. So this is with regards to air, navig uh, air navigation and how you need to approach to it. Uh, next, more, let's move on to aviation meteorology. So what is meteorology? Basically, it's the study of weather. So uh, as you all know, for pilots, the weather is very important and, um, and is a major cause of um, you know, a lot of decision making for a pilot while he or she is flying. So you need to know how the weather changes. Uh, we're talking about front movement, we're talking about rainfall, we're talking about pressure changes, we're talking about cyclone um, formations and so on and so forth. So we're talking about a major part of um, weather and how weather can change it in, in a fraction of a second. So uh, if you ask me, uh, are there any sums? Very minimal sums, uh, very two to three types of sums which can be done without a calculator and calculators are not allowed in MET um, but um, there are a lot of theory questions and can be a little tricky so aviation meteorology is something that you need to focus on as well and again it's 100 marks uh, passing would be 70 and it's a multiple choice questions moving on to the third subject which is your air regulation so what is regulation basically basically they're just the rules of the air what you need to know uh, as you're flying the aircraft from one place to another and things that you need to follow again a completely theory based question paper and this is a very famous question uh, subject why because of lately many people have been uh, failing to secure the 70 uh, mark target because uh, the, the the questions kind kind of get very twisted uh, they're very they're framed a little differently and it takes a little bit of understanding and breaking of the english language to understand and can lead to um, your answers being turned wrong. So you got to be very, very careful. Uh, it's taken, it's usually taken very uh, lightly. Uh, you shouldn't um, and make sure you give attention to your air regulations. Um, it can have things from, you know, um, rules of the air, your annexes, um, uh, your lighting, uh, your lightings in the runway and a lot of other, uh, you know, uh, indications that you need to know in the airport. So um, these are the three main subjects and we move on to the two other subjects, which is your tech general and tech specific. So um, why do we not, uh, why do I not uh, focus this? Like in, in the previous video, even when during the conversion uh, videos, I have told you that at least complete these three papers because this is the mandatory requirement, even if you're doing a flying abroad. So whenever you come back, you have your requirement. Uh, so your tech and specific, uh, your tech general and tech specific. So tech specific specifically is nothing but your uh, uh you know a, a study about your aircraft the aircraft you fly so in india whichever aircraft you fly you need to do a specific exam so let's say you fly a cessna 172 you need to do a cessna 172 exam so it's going to be all about the 172 which is basically from your poh pilots operating handbook so you, everything's going to be from that so again it's 100 mark and then you need to pass with a 70. and then we have a tech general which is a little bit about your aerodynamics and a little bit of um uh, the basics that you need to know very well and can get very tricky uh, often termed as a very tough paper along with navigation so these are your five papers that are the most important uh, for dgc exam prep um, apart from this we already have an rtr exam which i have already discussed in another video if you haven't checked it out make sure to click the link here and check the video so uh, these are your five subjects that you need to Pay attention to now you're going to ask me what is the study material recommended so here it goes so for your air navigation what we usually see in the um, in the exams is questions from oxford uh, which is a book from the european uh, uh, countries uh, oxford is oxford is good uh, keith williams is also a very good book which i'll refer uh, but remember when i'm saying oxford keith um, they are the european syllabus and they have 14 subjects that they write so out of the 14 subjects, our air navigation consists of five subjects, which is general, general navigation, instrumentation, radio navigation, a little bit of mass and balance and performance. So a little, little of everything is what comes um, from that books, but it's important for you to know. And of lately, um, these two are from where they usually get. We also have books from our Indian authors like from R. K. Bali Sir and so on and so forth. They are also good, do refer it. Uh, what, what, what would I suggest? practice more get your speed up for air navigation the more you practice sounds the more uh, efficient you're going to be during the exam because you have three hours and it's sometimes going to get very tricky if it's a very practical based paper so uh, that's with air navigation and uh, air navigation is very easy to be within 60 and 70 mark we usually students struggle to cross a 70 mark uh, so please pay attention to that um, 
uh, and uh, you need to work hard and you need to do well uh, you need to prepare well for air navigation uh, moving on to me- meteorology aviation meteorology the most preferred book would be uh, from ic joshi uh, the book is available um, it is more or less that plus a little bit you can also refer oxford um, uh, you know books so that also will help um, then uh, for uh, air regulations we have a um, book from rk bali sir which is really good we have a part 1 part 2 edition both are good we also have a book from v krishnan uh, which i also recommend uh, if uh, for you guys to study so but but the point in air regulation like i already stated uh, read the question well don't think it's the same question that you have read it before so that's about getting the books and for specific and general like i already told you specific um, you have books from uh, you have the poh of the aircraft that's more than enough and for general you have books from keith williams oxford's use how much you can so um this is a basic idea about your exams and uh, you like you already know your exams happen once in 2 3 months uh it can change depending upon the scenario like how we are facing the covid scenario uh exams are not happening but just stay tuned you will have your exams coming up and another important uh, point that i want to add here is people ask me in our dms uh, so which academy is good to go for classes uh, is it good to take classes um and can we study by ourselves all of this and uh, just let me clear all your doubts so here is your doubt section with regards to dgc exams first point uh for those who are trying to go abroad try to finish your exams and go very important and those who are even doing it in india finish your exams and then try taking admission in school it will help you help you to fast track your flying point number 2 um there are a lot of private academies in india um specifically in delhi um and other 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 small cities they, there are academies so now you are ask me which academy is best i'm not going to vouch for any academy because they are all doing their uh, job uh, but what i would like to tell you is before you um, take classes if you're finding it very difficult in terms of finances because nowadays the classes are ranging anywhere between 1.5 1.7 lakhs to even 2 to 3 lakhs that i recently heard uh, i'm talking about the four five subjects so it's a lot of money and if at all you having financial crunches um, yes you can study by yourself it's going to get a little difficult because you're going to be a fresher but uh, uh, the only thing i would suggest personally would be at least take help for air navigation because it's a very practical paper and something that's going to be helpful for you in your future as well and don't get me wrong all the subjects are important but um, yes meteorology and regulations can be manageable by your end if you're having financial crunches but if you can afford the course um go for it um, you know it's good um, that you know you have good knowledge whether you're doing a training in abroad or in india um, i mean it's going to be a very good head start for you and you might do well in your course so that's with that and training academies there are plenty and uh, what would i suggest take demo sessions attend the session and see if it's helping you or uh, i don't want you to just go somewhere and you know waste your money and just attend this course for the sake of it remember you're learning uh, for yourself and you're learning for your profession in general and how you're going to grow as a pilot do not take shortcuts don't skip chapters don't skip pages uh, it's about people behind you and your responsibility on your shoulders and when you're wearing the uniform make sure you know it or at least work towards knowing everything in hand so uh, that's a little bit about the dg exam i hope you've got a little bit of clarity as to how you can prepare um uh what would i suggest uh, can it be prepared in 2 3 weeks no definitely not um yes you might uh, there are academies who guarantee you pass um and you know it's good uh, but i would tell you you know also focus on the knowledge level because that's also going to help you when you go for your airline exams airline interviews airline entrance exams and so on and so forth so you don't want to study all over it again so uh that's about it i hope you've got a clear picture as to you what your dgc exams are and what you need to study i've stated all the materials i will leave all those um, names in the description below um i'm not giving uh, any recommendations as such but i would say you know check and see what works for you in your situation if you still can't afford you know you can be good enough to you know prepare by your own self and you know uh, get things going okay so uh in terms of um uh, uh your um, understanding of the subject is super important all right so um i hope you guys keep these points in mind uh, i will um, make more videos if you guys want a specific video on each of the subjects i will make them soon and uh, if you're also looking at um, understanding some theory subjects or any topics that are troubling you i would love to make videos on them please leave them in the comments below 
and um, we are also planning to start some uh, online uh, inter uh, online interactive sessions over Zoom and uh, other other medias like Google Meet and stuff. Uh, if you guys are interested, make sure to hit it down below and do get in touch with us if you have any doubts. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video so far, make sure to hit the like and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and uh, if you have um, learned something from it, make sure to share it with your friends. I hope uh, to see you in the next one. Goodbye.